friends, welcome back to The Sim and another video. We are going to take a look at a couple things today. First thing is going to be the first day report released by Burning Blue Design. Uh, it's their first airport in the United States, which is H.A. Clark Memorial Field in Arizona. Um, Burning Blue Design is one of my favorite developers. If you are following the channel, you know I like to fly in the UK and they have a lot of good small airfields in the UK that you can fly with GA aircraft. This is their first US release and they pay great attention to detail. They actually visited the United States, uh, this airport, take some photos and videos whatnot to make sure the airport they create for Microsoft Flight Simulator matches the real life counterpart as closely as possible. It's a small airport, there are not too many buildings, but it's a very close representation of the real airport in Arizona. So we'll take a look at the airport and then we will um, continue with a flight from H.A. Clark Memorial Field to um, to our destination airport, um, which is Bullhead City International Airport, Kilo India, Park Stroke, Papa. Uh, the, the code for the departure airport, H.A. Uh, Clark Memorial Airport, is Kilo Charlie Micromio, so we will be departing there and heading towards Kilo India Foxtrot Papa. Anyway, let's take a look at the airport released by Burning Blue Design first, and then we'll come back and do the pre flight procedure, start the aircraft, and be on our way. Right, I switched to the drone camera. Let's gain some altitude and take a look around to see what we can find and spot uh, that burning blue design put into this airport. They usually include some easter eggs if you can find them. There was a guy with a motorcycle in most of their airports. I'm not sure if that's one of their team members but we'll see if we can find the same guy here with a motorcycle. Uh, the hangar building is behind us. Uh, this is the biggest one and you can actually uh, select this hangar as your starting point if you want to fly uh, out of the hangar uh, instead of parking at the ramp. There is another Cessna 172 here or 150, 152, I'm sorry. And that's all we have in this hangar building. This truck doesn't know what it is doing. There is another spot over here. There are some uh, open hangers, I guess, or uh, places around here, some uh, parked aircraft. I am not sure if these are coming from FS traffic or static. There is also a small hangar here with uh, animated model inside and a couple aircraft in there. That looks like a... Wait a minute, is it a Piper or Belanca Super Viking? One of those. Um, we also have two gentlemen here unloading some crates or cardboard boxes from the truck. Uh, there is an old uh, camper here. Sunrise. There is another one here, North Point, attached to a truck. These are called fifth wheels in the US. If you are not ever familiar with it, um, and they are commonly used by people to go camping. Uh, looks like a fuel box over here, a small service building or hangar or garage type of building. I'm not familiar with the area, so I'm just making some guesses. There's another classic American Chevy looking like van here that is parked and two gentlemen are unloading some cardboard boxes and there's someone in the passenger seat uh, even a license plate here I'm not sure what this guy is doing with the headphones and uh, jacket but yeah so this takes us to the entrance 
as you see we have now a motorcycle that's more close to what we s are used to see in the United States two gentlemen taking a conversation here there is some information about the airport you can read it by pausing the video uh, Hubert Albert Clark was the first aviator uh, who owned an airplane in Williams Arizona so and this airport is dedicated to his memory and if you go here you'll see the the airport name on the wall another camper here some other aircraft some other vehicles parked there is a Dodge Durango looking SUV inside the apron or airport uh, borders uh, oh look at that Arizona Cardinals uh, NASA 1. I'm pretty sure these are some easter eggs um, tie down fees $10 please deposit here and then there are two ladies inside waiting for God knows for what some officers a billboard here with flyers uh, I think they did a great job uh, modeling this airport to its uh, real-life counterpart as close as possible to his real-life counterpart there's a photo of the H.A. Clark and some other posters on posters on the wall um, yeah so this is the airport I think it looks great if you like small airfields for GA flying I highly recommend you take a look at the burning blue design and their products not necessarily maybe this one but uh, the ones that they offer for UK as well. Anyway, we'll go and head back to our aircraft and continue with the startup and pre-flight procedures. All right, here we are outside. Let's hop inside the cockpit. Now we are cold and dark, and I am not sure if this livery is going to work. Some of the liveries tend to break the gyro pilot. We'll test if this one does or doesn't. Uh, if doesn't, I haven't tested with this livery. I was trying to record earlier with a different livery, and I ended up having some problems with the gyro pilot when we are airborne. So we'll see what this one does. Uh, we'll take a look around before we introduce power. First thing we need to do is accumulate some hydraulic pressure operate power flaps as you see in the gauges we have zero high pressure right now there's a valve here and a hand crank that we can crank five six times to build some pressure we will need 400 psi and we are crumbing to 500 i hope that's psi i hope that i said the correct units we close the valve and now we can open the power flaps if you don't do this, there won't be any hydraulic pressure and you cannot operate the call flaps. Next thing, this should be here though. Um, we are ready to introduce power. You have two options. You can deploy a battery cart and stay on battery power. Or you can turn on the airplane battery and use it until you start the engines. That's what we are going to do today. Before we do so, we'll check the landing gear lever is down. Um, that's, that's the flaps, that's the landing gear. Mixture is full rich and I tied uh, the fuel selectors to my controller so when I switch the mixtures it, they automatically go to the respective tanks. Left engine is fed from the left tank, right is fed from the right tank. Uh, prop levers go full forward and we'll crack open the throttles. Alright, so that's the first part. Um, we have some static elements, that's the chocks and the fire extinguishers. We will keep them there for now. Uh, carb heat can be locked and it will stay in the cold position. We'll check the, the fuel we have. Uh, looks like, oh, we haven't. We don't have power, so we cannot quite check the fuel yet. We will come back to this when we have battery power. 
In fact, let's go ahead and do it. We'll turn the battery master to on. That will give us DC power. You'll see the gyros spinning and some aircraft systems coming to life. And we'll check the fuel on board. We have 130 gallons, US gallons on both main tanks, and we have a little less around 90, 80, 85 on the right and left auxiliary tank. We should be enough fuel to get us where we need to uh, get us to our destination, airport. Alright. Other stuff that we need to check here. Um, <coughs> this is the outside air temperature, it's showing. Uh, around 10 degrees. This is probably Celsius, not Fahrenheit, as far as I know. That's 10 degrees, positive 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, current QNH uh, at the airport. We can check the Microsoft Metar, because sometimes it doesn't uh, match with the real world. 3028. That's the QNH. We'll set the QNH to 3028. So that's 302, and that should be roughly 308. That co correlates with the airport elevation of 6,800 feet. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, and we are ready to start our engines, which means we are going to turn the beacon light on and go to the upper overhead and we will energize mesh and deal with the magnetos and the priming. I have seen people doing different startup sequences. I am just going to use what I have read in the manual. The first thing, we'll turn the right booster pump on. We'll energize the right engine. Uh, and count to five or we wait five seconds and then mesh and count another five or 15 blades if you can count the blades i'm not sure if i will be able to do that i will just use my inner voice to count to five six and then we will turn the primer on that should make the engine catch and we should have an engine start so let's start with energizing and count to five one, two, three, four, five, mesh. One, two, three, four, five, right. Magneto comes on, and then we will just hit the primer switch. Hit it one more time. Hmm. There we go. I was maybe a bit quick. Looks like the engine catched and the RPM is climbing. We are going to set this engine to idle around 1000 RPM and hold it there so that the engine can warm up. We'll check the oil pressure, it's climbing into the green, fuel pressure is in the green, oil temperature will eventually increase cylinder head temperature as well. and carburetor and air temperatures should go into the green range. If not, we can always use the carb heat to get them into the green band. So that's the right engine started and we'll do the same thing for the left engine. Left booster pump goes on. Um, by the way, we forgot to turn the position lights to on and bright because it's daytime. We will turn the switch to the left to energize, count to 5 and mesh and maybe count to 10 this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mesh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mags are on, 1, 2, 3, four, five, and we are going to add the primer. Well, it looks like I'm again early. There we go. So you have to wait quite a bit. And now the engine catched, and 
we have a good engine start on both engines and idling around a thousand RPM now. Which is great, which is what we want. We quickly check the temperatures and pressures to make sure they are in the green. As you see the cylinder oil temperature is in the green for the right engine, it's warmed up. Left engine is warming up, cylinder head temperature is climbing into the green as well. Carburetor heat, we'll take a look at that later. We also verify that we have positive hydraulic pressure. We do. And we can do the after start. Booster pumps can come off. Generators can be reset and turned on for both left and right generator. Over here, avionics can come on. Anything else that I forget? Probably nothing yet, but we will discuss on a couple other things prior to take off. Alright. So oh, let's tune our radios. The first VOR that we are going to track when we fly, we will depart from probably from runway 36, not 18, because if you depart from 18, there's high elevation or hills around that direction, and you might not be able to climb as fast as I'd like. But we can always try if we decide to decide to depart from runway 18. We will fly the runway heading of 181 degrees for um, for a while, for six miles, and then make a right turn to 278 uh, to track the VOR. The first VOR is 112 decimal zero. We we'll make it active, and the second one after this is 108 decimal eight zero. This will stay as standby, and we'll do the opposite in our uh, nav two. 108 decimal 8 is the active, 112 decimal 0 is the standby. We also can turn the transponder to standby and turn the ADF radio on, even if we are not going to use it. So that's the radio sorted. Nothing here, nothing here as far as I remember. We'll turn the pedal hole heat uh, prior to tax taxing out. But that's, that's what we need to do. Okay, so as I said, we will fly the runway heading. Let's check our heading to make sure it's aligned with our, our magnetic compass. It's showing 270 degrees, direct north. And if I go down, hopefully we will be able to see. We have the RMI here. Uh, we will set the RMI to the heading that we will be flying, that's going to be uh, 278, so if that's 275, this should be 278, 10, 12, 15, 20, no, each one is 10 degrees, I believe, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, interesting, anyway, we'll assume that's, that's close enough, this one, is our uh, magnetic compass, I believe, or gyro compass, either one. Well, I can't remember, I have to check the manual. One of them is gyro, one of them is magnetic. This should be the gyro compass, this is magnetic, I believe. And we have a radio compass too, where we can head, set the same heading of 278 degrees. And hopefully, this is all we needed to do can also pre-select the heading on the gyro cage if we decide to use it for after departure. We can set 278 degrees to track that you are stationed after takeoff. Alright, that's our radios and instruments sorted. Uh, there is nothing over here except setting the trim for takeoff and we will just use very busy cockpit, it's not easy to show you what I'm doing and I can't get nicer views but we are going to set the nose up uh, roughly one degrees like this it should be good enough for takeoff 
and we are waiting for taxi and we'll sort to rest uh, when we are at the runway uh, hold short point or runway 18 I think I'm gonna try to depart from runway 18 even though we have hills ahead of us after departure we'll see if we can quickly climb about those uh, high, uh, high mountains and cliffs and hills uh, and we will be eventually making a rare left right turn so we could be able to avoid the rest of the elevation around the airport's vicinity. Okay, so we are good to go now. Uh, I am not completely sure if the landing lights are used as for taxi lights as well, or if this is the passing light. If you know for sure, let me know which one is used for which. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this off and use the landing lights when we are at the wrong way. <laughs> Alright, I think we have checked everything we needed to check and I'll talk about the power when we are uh, holding short. Let's disengage the parking brake. She should start moving and this should automatically remove the statics uh, or you can use this button. This is the statics, that's the door, that's the cargo door, passenger door and the static elements like the ground power card as well as the uh, fire extinguishers and whatnot. So let's feed her some power so that she can get moving. There we go. We'll come back down to a thousand RPM and start an immediate left turn to get on the taxiway. So far, so good. So the concern I have departing here is the high field elevation which is 6,800 feet. Uh, let's get on this taxiway. And we will not get full power from the engines because of high altitude at the airfield. And we might have to use uh, what is uh, called a blower which essentially is a supercharger in the DC3 to generate or to help engines generate more power at high elevation takeoff uh, situations. So these are the blowers and when you are taking from a high field elevation above a certain feet you might want to put those blowers to the forward position and they will give you more RPM as you see the change or hear the change in the engine sounds. This should get us uh, the takeoff power we need, which is 46 inches of manifold pressure. If we are not using the blowers, we are not going to get to the 46 inches manifold pressure and our takeoff will be very challenging and we might not be able to clear those uh, hills after takeoff. We also set uh, quarter flaps, that should be enough for takeoff. And I'll meet you guys at the runway hold short point. Alright, we are holding short at runway 18 and we will complete our final checks and be on our way. Let's jump into the cockpit. First thing, we'll check the temperatures and pressures to make sure we are still in the green. I am not super happy with this, so I am going to unlock the car heat and use some carburetor heat to increase the temperature so that it can get into the green like so uh, we can use just a little bit more because when we start climbing that's gonna change this looks good to me we can lock it again <coughs> as I said we have the blowers this should get us or give us the, the manifold pressure we need uh, trim is set Tail wheel, I'm going to keep it unlocked. I find it very hard to control this aircraft on the ground with the tail wheel locked during takeoff, and I suck at tail draggers, so that will increase my chances of controlling this aircraft on the ground. Hydraulic levers will not change, it's in the takeoff position that's verified. When we are getting ready to use the gyro pilot, we need to switch it to the gyro pilot position to operate with gyro pilot. That's will happen later on. We are not picking up any signal as yet, as of now, or yet, 
but we should see a changing when we are airborne. We'll put the landing lights on <coughs> for takeoff. Pedo heat comes on. Uh, booster pumps also will come on. Uh, transponder goes to altitude reporting. I think that's the third position and there is a test so this should be the altitude reporting and we are ready to enter the runway so parking brake is engaged need some power to get our moving and we should have no problems now let's make sure the gyro pilot is uncaged I will double check that. I can't remember which one was which which one was the uncased position. I think it it, it is this one because uh, we will eventually use the gyro pilot. All right, runway one eight. The only problem with this airport is the runway textures overlapping with either the Microsoft textures or uh, Rex airport textures that I had. So hopefully that will be fixed by Burning Blue Design or. In a future update, I'm pretty sure they will fix it. All right, going back, we are checking our current heading. It's showing 180181 roughly. Same for the gyro compass. Uh, our magnetic compass is showing the same heading 181. Uh, <coughs> radio compass I'm not sure if it's going to show anything after takeoff if we pick up the signal anyway uh, we are ready for takeoff everything is set up we'll hold the brakes increase the throttle until we get to 46 inches and while doing so we will keep an eye on the temperatures and pressures to make sure oh one thing I forgot let's just bring the throttles back before we do the takeoff run we have to move the cow flaps to trail position prior to takeoff. Now we are ready. Let's increase the throttles, get to 46 inches of manifold pressure. I am not sure if these blower switches or handles can be used uh, in a different position. We are coming up to 45 and 46 inches. Takeoff power is set. All T's and P's are stable and we can release the brakes and hope for the best. Alright, off we go. I'll try to use the rudder to maintain the center line. When the tail gets lighter and ready to lift, the aircraft tends to uh, lean left or head. Yep, that's what I'm saying. It's really hard to control this aircraft on the ground uh, if, if, if there are winds and whatnot. So I'm trying to use differential braking to keep her on the center line. I can't say I'm doing a great job here, but I'm trying at least. Uh, coming up to 80 miles, I think 90 miles is where we are going to uh, start coming back on the yoke for takeoff. All right, that's coming up. Let's pull the yoke back and we are airborne. We are gonna climb at 500 feet per minute and hopefully that is going to be enough to clear the trees and elevation around us. Positive rate, we can bring the gear in to decrease the drag. We are cutting it very close to the airport, the, the trees. And we lost some airspeed. We will pitch the nose down a little bit and pick up some airspeed hopefully and we'll come back to 42 inches of manifold pressure and 2500 rpm to relieve the engines and that will give us the climb power we need so now we're doing fine we just need to follow the runway heading of 181 and get ready to make the left turn or right turn I'm sorry and also keep trimming the aircraft for a steady climb at 
five six hundred feet per minute for now and we will do the after takeoff checks uh, when we clear this high elevation around us okay it's time to make that right turn to 278 turn and hopefully intercept the signal uh, in a little bit after completing that turn we should be heading towards that VOR and we will follow the heading if we don't pick up the signal after completing the turn there is still some high elevation around us we should keep climbing and this is why it's important to use the blowers in other words the superchargers so that we don't risk our climb uh, flaps can come up and we can trim for climb again looks like we're good and I'm gonna clear this hill and get back on 278 I intentionally turned a little bit more, more to clear this uh, hill next to us <coughs> okay it's time to get back on track and hopefully we will pick up the signal when we get there all right I'm going to trim the aircraft for steady climb and we should get back on course and do the after takeoff checks. We are going to level off at 9000 feet. I'm not gonna climb any higher. And all right, we should turn just a little bit more towards 278 or 27 to get back on track as we drifted a little bit to clear that hill and this should give us the climb rate we need and we control our heading uh, while climbing like this all right that climb rate i'm happy with and let's do the after takeoff booster pumps will come off uh, over here, bending lights, we can turn them off now. We'll take a look at the temperatures and pressures. They are all looking good, except the oil temperature is too hot. And we need to do something about it. Maybe we'll just turn the cowl flaps off. And reduce the blowers to give us some... But there is no, like, middle... Uh, setting for the blowers and we need that power to be able to climb let's go around and change the hydraulic uh, lever to gyro pilot lock it in place and now we can engage the gyro pilot it should be on autopilot and we engage by pressing this Pressing the rudder in, and we will set the elevator for a steady climb. It's gonna take a minute for gyro pilot to kick in, but the nose is coming up as you see. We, we don't wanna climb too fast, we are very close to 9000, so we will eventually get it leveled at 500 feet per minute and we started to pick up the signal so we should start turning towards the signal slightly we catch, catch up to the signal and that should give us uh, what we need that's the deviation that we are seeing on the VOR indicator or HSI and we are climbing a little bit slower than I like so I'm gonna increase the climb rate and hopefully in about five six hundred feet we should be able to relieve the engine I keep turning to the right to get back on the course so that we can track that VOR properly. RMI is set to 7.8. 
or 278, I'm sorry. And it should give us what we need. <coughs> All right, let's keep climbing just a little bit more. Get back on the climb profile to reach 9,000 feet. There you have it. It's looking beautiful outside and we managed to take off with uh, using the blowers to increase our power generation due to high field elevation and we are climbing towards 9000 feet. We can climb just a little bit faster like six, 700 feet per minute. We are not going to switch the altimeter to local setting. We are still fine. We are in the US and transition altitude is 18,000 so we can perfectly use the local barometric pressure. All right, the course should come around. It's 278 degrees. And let's see here. That should be close to 278. And we should turn to 278. That should align us with the VOR. As you see, the needle is going to center itself when we complete the turn. Maybe one more degree. Yeah, everything is looking fine. I can't remember how we adjust the course on the VOR. But this is the glide slope indicator, so I don't know. I need to remember, and I don't remember at this point. Okay, we are coming up to 9000. We should consider about leveling off. Well, we are not climbing actually, so let's get to 9000 first and then we will level off. Perfect. I'm just adjusting my heading to make sure the needle is centered. Good. Let's keep climbing just a little bit faster and get to 9000. I think we need to pull the mixtures back to increase the power because we are now at high altitude and we are probably flooding the engine. Yep. So let's level off. We passed 9000 a little bit and we will go mixtures auto lean back on the troubles for 35 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 rpm it's the cruise setting I want to use oil temperature is still towards the red but heat and cylinder head temperatures are looking okay and I'm not sure if we should close or keep the all flaps at trail setting just to relieve the engines I'm not sure if we can uh, we probably shouldn't we'll keep the blowers on at this elevation it's like we keep climbing we need to get down to 9000 down. I was going the opposite direction so the 
percent, 500 people per minute, and get down to 9,000 here in a little bit. I'm gonna keep adjusting my heading. Make sure we are following the, the signal properly. to probably not descending. Should keep descending down to nine thousand. We can maintain ten thousand, I don't know. Probably better off with maintaining ten thousand because we are closer get there. Alright, we need to turn a little bit, we are losing the needle, so let's make sure it's centered. So, should get to 10,000 here in a little bit. Can feed some power. And we are at 10,000, so let's level off. And as we pick up speed, we need to adjust our gyro pilot so that we don't keep climbing and stay maintain uh, 9000 perfect everything is now looking good and we are finally tracking the VOR properly and we don't have a DME in this aircraft as far as I know, so we won't be able to uh, know what's the distance unless the radios has such functionality, but I doubt they do. Uh, I guess we just started climbing again, so let's bring the nose down and level off. I think this is good cruise setting at 160 miles per hour and this is where I am planning to end the video and there will be a second part where we will discuss descent and landing and I hope I don't suck as much when I'm landing this aircraft uh, tail breakers are hard to land I'm telling you anyway uh, this was my aircrafter's choice this is probably not going to get a lot of attention. I think the jet airliners get more attention from flight simmers. And if you are following the channel, you know that I have uh, an interest in retro airliners, and DC-3 is one of them. I thought about flying the DC-6, but the airport we departed was too small for a DC-6, so I decided to go with the DC-3. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did consider giving it a like, if you are not a channel subscriber, consider subscribing to, notify for, to get notified for future videos. Thanks for being here with me today and I'll be seeing you in the next video.